Good morning, everyone. It is seven minutes after the hour of 7 o'clock. Time for a look at the news for a Thursday. It's the 16th day of the month of April. Time for a look at the news. Well, Calaveras Public Health on Wednesday confirmed two additional cases of COVID-19 in the county, bringing the total to 11. While the two cases are unrelated, both are men. One resides in Valley Springs and is linked to another recent case there. So that case, according to County Health Officer Dr. Dean Kaleda, is not concerning for what is called community transmission. This is a case where one person transmitted it to somebody else that they have close contact with. The second man lives in West Point. The source of the exposure regarding this individual is currently being investigated. Of the 11 confirmed cases, seven cases have since recovered. No one has died. And uh, again, Kaleda says Calaveras County should expect additional cases before the outbreak begins to subside. Here's how the numbers stack up in Calaveras County as of yesterday. One person between the ages of birth and 17 have come down with the virus. Four between the ages of 18 and 49. One between the ages of 50 and 64. And five 65 and over. Six female and five male have come down with the COVID-19. Test results received, 266. And again, seven of the 11 count have fully recovered. Well, sheriffs across the state affirm their opposition to a rule adopted by the Judicial Council of California Monday that temporarily imposes an emergency statewide bail schedule setting bail at zero dollars for specified misdemeanors and felonies due to COVID-19. Now, the California State Sheriff Association notes that while the zero dollar bail rule exempts certain crimes from its reach, it would nevertheless apply to other offenses, including child abuse, elder abuse and violating public health orders, meaning suspects arrested for those crimes could be released on zero dollars bail. To date, Calaveras County had to release 19 inmates due to this order. Now, in a statement released yesterday, Calaveras Sheriff Rick DiBasilio clarified the order, saying, quote, it releases all misdemeanor offenders and some felony offenders. It does not release violent felony offenders per the California Penal Code. However, in the eyes of a reasonable person like you and I, some of our chronic offenders of the law can be viewed as violent. Now, Sheriff David Livingston, president of the California State Sheriff Association, added, quote, Sheriffs understand the unprecedented impacts COVID-19 has created, but we are deeply concerned the blanket release from custody of potentially thousands of inmates will have far-reaching public safety ramifications. And as the Emergency Operations Center in uh, Amador County continues to work with health care providers and first responders on the COVID-19 pandemic, it is clear how easily the virus can be transmitted and how dangerous it can be for high-risk community members, such as those over 65 years of age and older and those with underlying medical conditions. Well, again... Amador County Health Officer Dr. Rita Kerr reminds us essential activities in Amador County can be accomplished with care to protect yourself and others. Risk can be reduced by spacing at least six feet apart from others, wearing a cloth mask, and remembering good hand hygiene. And, of course, public health officials in both Amador and Calaveras County advise anyone that feels ill with a fever or respiratory symptoms, even mild symptoms, to self-isolate at home for seven days. When fever and symptom-free for 72 hours, the quarantine can be lifted. If you have been in close contact with a person who has tested positive for COVID-19 or is presumed to be infected with COVID-19, you should quarantine at home for 14 days from your last contact with that individual as well. Well, a Murphy's man arrested following a two-vehicle major injury accident. Calaveras CHP reports Tuesday evening around 6.30, Sky Harris driving eastbound on Highway 4 approaching Northwood Drive, while Carlos Vigil was driving westbound on 4, also approaching Northwood. He was traveling at 55 miles an hour. 
Well, Harris made a left turn toward Northwood directly into the path of Vigil's vehicle. Vigil swerved to the right in an attempt to avoid a collision, but still collided with the right front of Harris's vehicle, causing injury to his four juvenile occupants. A seven-year-old boy and three-year-old girl were airlifted to UC Davis Medical Center. Now, alcohol and or drugs are suspected to be a factor in this collision. Harris subsequently arrested for DUI, causing injury, and booked into the Calaveras County Jail. The collision still under investigation. And Amador County emergency crews were called out to a reported vehicle in the waters of Lake Comanche last night. According to reports from the scene, around 10 o'clock, an elderly couple drove off a 70-foot cliff and landed in the lake near the causeway. Luckily, the water level was very low, and they landed in only about four feet of water. Personnel from CHP, Jackson Valley Fire, Ione Fire, and Amador County Sheriffs worked together to rescue the 83-year-old driver and his 90-year-old wife, who suffered only minor injuries. The incident is under investigation. And census workers scheduled to start door-to-door collection of info this month, but that all put on hold due to the coronavirus pandemic. Now, the Census Bureau announced yesterday that field offices will be reactivated June 1st. Any activities regarding interacting with the public will follow current guidance to promote health and safety. Now, after the field info is collected, the Census Bureau conducts a thorough process to produce counts. That field info is currently due by midsummer but the Census Bureau is requesting an extension to October 31st. Now, the Census helps ensure states receive funding for things like health care, parks, and roads. California officials report that for every person uncounted, the state could lose $1,000 in federal funding for the next 10 years. The Census forms were sent out over a month ago, so people could self-report via mail, phone, or online. As of today, the Census Bureau estimates that... 48% of Americans have done so, 44% of Californians. And Calaveras will be hosting a writing competition for students. Members of the county fair decided to invite children ages 5 through 18 to share their experiences with the pandemic. They may share an essay, short story, or poem addressing four writing classes. They are homeschooling and or distance learning, what it's been like, What have I learned about myself? What has been the best part of the stay-at-home order? And discovery, another topic. Note that entries cannot exceed 1,000 words, and they must be in by the 15th of May. For more information, visit the Calaveras County Fair website. And that, my friends, is a look at local news on this gold country. Thursday morning from the KVGC News Center. I'm J.D. And I'm Jim Geedy reporting. Remember, for the latest news, traffic, and weather, 24 hours a day to visit our website at kvgcradio.com.